One third of our lives is spent at work, and so as you progress and grow, your workspace should grow with you. Over the last year, I've outgrown my space and I've made the big decision to buy a new condo space to transform into a dedicated home office and creative studio. I'm excited to bring you guys along this journey and into this new space, so welcome to the first episode of the Setup Makeover series. Hey friends, Andrew here, hope you're well. If you follow my Instagram, you'll know that I've been working on renovating and transforming this condo space. And in fact, I've been asking for your help on the design choices like the floorboards and furnishings. So big shout out to those who shared their opinion with me on Instagram. It was genuinely useful and it was pretty awesome to get you guys on board this process. In today's video, I'll be sharing the design philosophy for this new space, the renovations, and give you an initial walkthrough and share all the new tech and furniture I've included so far. I want you guys to be as much a part of this series as I am, so make sure you're subscribed to with the notification bell turned on for future episodes in this setup makeover series. So just a bit of a backstory to how I got this place and what the plan is. I purchased this property a few years ago, brand new with the income I had coming in from the e-commerce business years ago. And I've actually just been renting it out to tenants since. It's a one bedroom condo at about 700 square feet. So I think there's enough space for what I'm planning to do, which is to transform it into a dream home office setup and multi-purpose creative studio. I've definitely outgrown my previous home office space though, and they were featured in most of my desk setup videos, which you might have already seen. They've been getting millions of views, which is pretty mind boggling to think about. But anyway, let's start with the design inspiration and how I began to plan out this entire move. So this new space acts as a completely blank canvas and interior design options are limitless. So typically with a large project like this, I like to start mapping it out with two specific digital tools to get me started. The first is Figma, a collaborative design tool which I use to brainstorm and visualize the way I want this new space to look before buying all the furniture, buying all the tech and making those renovation decisions. I've cut up the floor plan in Figma into various use cases, including a filming studio, multiple desk areas and a wider home office area or with their own specific purpose. I also plotted out all the interior styling and furniture in advance here. So as you can see, the theme I have going on for this space is light mode. I'm typically a dark mode person, so this change is kinda jarring. But I've settled on the light mode aesthetic because the new space gets a ton of natural light throughout the day, unlike the previous space, which was really quite dark. So I wanted to lean into that warm natural lighting. This means a lot of light oak wood, off white walls and light tone furniture and tech. The plan really is to keep this place feeling minimal, bright, airy and an incubator for creativity and deep thinking. Next, I used monday.com to visualize and organize all the moving parts and monday.com also happens to be today's video sponsor. If you've ever moved or renovated, you know that there's a lot of moving parts and headaches involved, especially since we're working with brands, suppliers and creating content too. So it was really useful getting the entire workflow and process onto a work operating system like monday.com so we could smoothly keep track of everything. Once I invited the team and got them onto the platform, we started to build out the various different workflows via the library of quick start templates, which saved us a heap of time. And I was able to start managing, assigning and scheduling just about any task. The other big time saver is monday.com's workflow center, which is essentially automations for apps we already use. So for example, we use Slack to communicate with the team. So I just search for Slack here. Then when status of a task gets changed in the office board, I want to notify our manager, Colleen, who oversees a lot of what we're doing. So in here, change status to office, then something to working on it, then change the notification message, and then the user to Colleen. So once each task is done, like the floorboards, buying certain furniture and tech, well, market is done, super visual as you can see here. 
We also had set up a custom dashboard so the entire team can track the most important parts of the move and the entire project. It also just works well for teams and organizations looking to track workflows, visualize data and collaborate effectively. And I'll drop a link to a free trial of monday.com below if you personally want to check it out or your team would like to check it out too. Now moving on to the renovations, which has been unsurprisingly a headache of delays. This new space is both an office for the company and remains an investment property for the future. So I wasn't able to go, you know, too crazy with renovations, but I still find it important to refresh the foundation. And also, I also wanted to make this office feel like a home and a creative studio, less like a sterile office. Sterile rarely sparks creativity. So there's a few areas I definitely had renovated, including the kitchen, bathroom, and especially the nasty looking carpet, which looks so worn down, it looked like an expired melted pancake. Yep, it made the space so dreary. So after some research, I picked out this light oak wood laminate floorboard. Not only does it look amazing and tonally match the light mode aesthetic, laminate floorboards are also a really durable water and scratch proof solution, which is important with all the gear and creative work that that's gonna be going on here. And the main reason why I didn't choose hardwood. One thing I'm not the biggest fan of though is the scotias here that I actually didn't ask for in the first place. I would have preferred the flooring to go underneath the timber skirting for a clean up for the vanity shelf, polished chrome towel rail that wasn't previously there and vitrified porcelain and ceramic tiles throughout. Moving on to my favorite parts, the furniture and the tech. The first really cool piece that I want to share with you in this space is the Govi Glide Hexa Pro sitting on the feature wall here. I've added these in to give a splash of color and creativity into an otherwise minimal and light space. They're essentially RGBIC light panels with 3D effects achieved by the boxed lines and a slightly raised design. Unboxing it, you have the manuals, 10 light panels, power block, a level and connectors, and installation was simple enough with the app, but it is a pretty particular process because each panel needs to be linked consecutively. In the companion app, I've automated these lights to transition and rotate through scenes. And these scenes make these lights seriously such a visually stunning piece to have in this particular creative space. But I can't seem to choose between my favorites like Ocean, Collapse, and Matrix. Let me know which one you think I should stick with. Almost everyone who's come through this office so far has been immediately drawn to the unique light panels. I'll drop a link to these cool panels below if you want to check them out. At the heart of the desk setup is the desk itself. Another sit stand desk was a no brainer. They're incredibly versatile, super easy to build and just make a lot of sense for my use case of always wanting to move about. This one here is the new Ascent Desk by Omnidesk in the extra large size. The larger size of the desk will allow me to spread out multiple screens and laptops, shelves, creative material, space that I didn't get in my previous office, and I'm pretty excited to air out my creativity on this larger desk. If you're working with a small space, it's really important to limit colors and tones and be really intentional with them. So to complement the light woody tones in this room, I've opted for the solid Hevia wood top, which is similar to light maple wood. Its natural wood markings and teething are a beautiful touch and add an air of sophistication to the desk. I brought over this huge 40 inch 5K ultra wide monitor, which is perfect for multitasking and sitting on top of the monitor now is Logitech's new Brio 500, which Logitech has kindly sent over. It's a great affordable full HD webcam and considering I frequently work from home and am in quite a few virtual meetings, a good webcam ensures I'm able to bring my best self forward to every meeting. This feature packed webcam includes AI face image and light correction and Logitech's auto framing feature so I'm able to walk around during meetings and still be in frame. The feature I personally find most interesting is show mode which lets me present sketches or items on my table by simply tilting the webcam down. It makes my presentations that much more engaging and it seemed to impress others on the call. The webcam is perfectly complemented by Logitech's Zone Vibe 100 headset. I now use it in the office for work and play. 
It's professional enough for meetings with its noise cancelling boom mic and ensures that my voice comes through clearly. Outside of meetings, the microphone is tucked away for a casual, enjoyable listening experience when I'm winding down or doing deep focus work. Both of these items are really affordable and amazing work from Home Companions. I'll drop a direct link to them both below. And of course I've bought over my cherished Herman Miller Aeron that I recently bought. This one is the newly released and remastered Aeron Onyx in the jet black Onyx color and features ocean bound plastics. $2,000 is an incredible amount to spend on a chair, yes, but it's $2,000 your butt and your back will thank you for the rest of its lifetime. It genuinely is that good and it's unfortunately hard to sit on other office chairs now. That said, I still totally recommend the IKEA Marcus as an alternative at a fraction of the price, but if you can push the budget, I recommend saving up even a secondhand Herman Miller Aeron if you can, which if you're lucky, you can find for about half the price. After the desk was set up, I had to get music flowing through the empty space. Music is really important to me. So to lift this space musically, I'm decking the space out with my favorite sound system, Sonos. I bought in the Sonos One smart speaker, the Move, and the extra portable Roam to tie each room together. And between these speakers, High Fidelity Audio floods the 700 square feet of space for a lavish listening experience that elicits the creativity I need to do my best work. I also love how Sonos speakers are beautifully designed so they look beautifully integrated into this creative space. It really is worth going the extra mile with what you choose to grace your personal spaces with. Another element I'm excited for is all of the additional storage space I've got. In my previous office space, I had brown boxes literally everywhere. It was all over the place and the clutter impacted productivity and mood. I've got three to four large storage cupboards now to store all the tech I'm reviewing, all the camera production gear and my extra stock that I might have on hand. I'm also really enjoying this feature shelf that I've built, which now displays some of my favorite coffee table books, beautiful design items and my tech, most of which was just in storage previously. So it's really nice that they now get to see the light of day. This unique piece is actually two shelves sitting next to each other and the white wood and light oak blends nicely with the new floorboards and wood paneling here. The piece really does elevate the open-ended space I'm sure it will be filled up in no time at all. Lighting is going to be a big project in here too since there'll be some days where I'll be working later into the night. At the moment, the harsh down lighting just doesn't cut it so I'm planning to overhaul the lighting with smart lights. Right now I have this really beautiful Halo Lux light from Sony, I believe it's pronounced, which is a modern minimal halo shaped dimmable light. I've linked everything down below in the description in case you're interested in anything I've shared in this new space. I finally feel like there is room to stretch my legs and mind here. And if you want to see more of the setup in progress, check out my Instagram at Andrew Ethan Zhang. I'll be sharing the progress and behind the scenes there. And I also want to thank all of you watching, especially if you're still watching. Genuinely, thank you so much for your support and tuning in every time. It's crazy to think that since quitting my nine to five job, starting a Shopify store and also starting this YouTube channel, that it would turn into a dedicated creative studio and office with an audience watching. It's crazy to think about, but here we are, and I cannot wait to share more episodes in this setup makeover series. You can expect new desk setups, giveaways, and some seriously cool tech to come. Also, I almost forgot, we worked with the talented folks at Passionate's Agency to launch our new redesigned website and dusted off the cobwebs with a new brand too. The website's now home to weekly content all around premium tech, beautiful design, and purposeful business. And yes, we are now hiring on our new jobs page. Check it out and please let me know what you think of the new website. If you made it to the very end of this video, drop the code word comment set up and I'll give it a like. For now, I'll share some videos on screen here of my previous desk setup that you might wanna check out, which will now be my secondary workspace at home. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.